Hello everybody and welcome to my third lecture on electron configurations. What we learned last time was that the atom has several different energy levels that don't all have the same sublevels, the same shapes. So the first energy level and the second energy level and the third energy level, they don't all have the same sublevels available. The bigger energy levels have more shapes. We also learned that if you throw 16 electrons into an atom, it looks kind of like, it, it like this. And maybe it doesn't really gel with you that these look like people, so you can just think of them as electrons if you want, little dots. But I'm using this people thing just to be consistent with my last one. Okay. Every person is an electron. It doesn't really matter if they're upside down or right side up in this particular video. So now I'm going to teach you about the electron configuration, which is the real point of this whole lecture series. An electron configuration is basically a list of every electron in an atom and where they are in terms of their energy levels and their sublevels. So if this apartment complex was an atom, it would have 16 electrons, because there's 16 people in there, and the uh, neutral atom with 16 electrons is sulfur, so I'm going to give you the electron configuration for sulfur, okay? It's basically just a guest list. So the guest list of this apartment complex would look kind of like this. The first building's S floor has two people, because you remember this is the S floor, the P floor, the D floor, and the fourth floor is called the F floor. That's just the way that the chemist named it. So the first building's S floor has two people, and the second building's S floor also has two people. The second building's P floor has six people. Then the third building's S floor has two people. And the third building's P floor has four people. And that's all the people that are living in this apartment complex. This is basically the electron configuration. We don't have buildings, we have energy levels. And we don't have people, we have electrons. And we don't have floors, we have sub-levels or shapes. But that's pretty much it. We don't write it like this, though, because this is a pain. There are so many words here. What we do is we take the important information. We take the energy level, the sublevel or the shape, and then how many electrons are in there, and we stick them all together. So the second building's S floor has two people. We would write that as 2S and a little 2. The second building's P floor has six people. We would write that as a 2P6. Third building's S floor has two people, and the third building's P floor has four people in it. This is the electron configuration. Although we normally don't write it vertically, we write it horizontally, like this. The symbol, every single part, has three sections. So every single part of this has three important parts to it. The big number is the energy level. It's like the building. The letter is the sublevel, and that's like the floor in the building. And the exponent type number is the occupancy that tells you how many people are in that floor. So this is how you would interpret this, okay? I'm going to interpret the electron configuration for sulfur for you. 1, that means that I'm in the first energy level. S, that means I'm on the S floor. 2, so there are two people in that floor. Next we have 2, so that's the second energy level. S, so that's the first floor. And 2, so I have two people. Then 2, second energy level again. P, now I'm on the P floor, not the S floor. And 6, there are six people in that floor. 3, so now I'm in the third building, or the third energy level. S, so I'm on the S floor and two, so I have two little people in there. Finally, three, so I'm in the third building still. P, so I'm on the second floor, because that's the second energy level of shape, basically. You have the S, then P, then D, then F, from low to high energy. And four, because I have four people currently residing in the third building's P shape. Now the electrons in the highest energy level, they're called valence electrons. They're gonna be really important. So if you have a configuration and you wanna know what the valence electrons are, you just look at the energy levels, right? These are in energy level 1, these are in 2, these are in 3, and the highest energy level are the valence electrons. So for this one, for this atom, energy level 3 are the valence electrons. You can imagine it like this. If you have the visual of the apartment complex, the people who live in the biggest building are the valence electrons. And they're called, they're really important because the valence electrons are the biggest ones. They have the biggest electron probability waste, basically. So they're the farthest away out from the atom. So like if this is the nucleus, you would have like the energy level 1 electrons here, energy level 2 electrons there, and then the valence electrons would be the farthest out. They have the biggest waves. Now this is a really easy way to figure out the electron configuration for any element, and that's because the periodic table's blocks are arranged to represent different shapes. All of these are S-shaped. They have S as the last entry into their configuration. These are all P-shaped. They have P as the last entry of their configuration. These are all D-shaped, they have D as the last entry, and these are all F-shapes, they have F as the last entry. 
The only really weird thing is the helium. It really belongs over here, electron configuration wise. So helium, it only has one S electrons, but it looks like it's in the P block. It really belongs over there where that blue box is. But for other reasons, it's all the way on the right. So the periodic table is kind of a compromise. It mostly is sorted by the S, P, D, F shapes, but not entirely. To figure out the last entry of an electron configuration, you need the shape, the level, and the electron number. And I'll show you how to use these as an, as an example. So um, which element has the electron configuration that ends in 4P3? Well, that's not too bad. What you do is you find the P block, okay? This is the P block. And next, you look right here. This is the energy level. That's going to tell you basically what uh, row of the table you're looking at. So the 4P line, well, 4P, that's this line. And then the little 3, that lets you know that there are three electrons in that block. So we go 1, 2, 3. This is 4P3. It is AS, which is arsenic. I think. I mean, I think AS is arsenic. I know AS is right. <laughs> so which element ends in 5S1? Well, you look at the S block. You go down to the fifth row. And in 5S1, so you just do 1 into it, it's RB. Which one ends in 2P5? So you go to the P block. And you go down to the second row. Then you go 5 in. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Fluorine is 2P5. Now, when I'm doing this, what I'm kind of assuming is that this right here, 1, 2, 3, is the same as this first number, the energy level. And that's mostly true, but not entirely true. I'm going to go into the exception in the next video. So 3S2, you go to the S block, you go 3 down, and then 2 in, Mg magnesium. 6P6, you go to the P block, you go 6 down, and then you go 6 in, Rn. 4P2, you go to the P block, you go down 4, and you go over 2, so GE. 1S1. One, so these are the S's, the first S's, and then one is one, you go one in, it's hydrogen. This is all the way stretched, because helium also counts as being right here. And so if I ask you one S2, what you do is you go to the S shape, the first row, and this is one S2, but there's nothing there. That's where helium really deserves to be, but it's over on the right for other reasons. So the answer is helium. Helium is one S2. So now you should be okay at conceptually understanding energy levels and sublevels understanding what an electron configuration is, if I give you the symbol, and figuring out which element ends in which configuration. I hope that was helpful.